uh, want to call to order the special meeting of the Carabelle City Commission. It's Tuesday, February 26, 2019, and it's 1.30 p.m. We're at the Carabelle City Hall in the location at 1206 Highway 98 East. I'd like to ask Commissioner Allen if he would please say the invitation and then we'll say the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the law standing. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we have this time together to discuss the things that pertain to this wonderful city you take care of us with. We ask you to be with us in our wisdom and judgment. If we might do that, would be best for the future of our wonderful town. And we ask you to be with those that are unable to get out, those that are remain in their homes, uh, bless them with healings and power. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we'll just move right into item one since this is a special meeting. Uh, item one, discussion of possible action regarding professional proposal for possible acquisition of summer camp, water, and sewer utility services to the city of Carabell. Um, we have uh, Mr. John Curtis here, St. Joe Company Community Manager for questions and answers. And then uh, I see he's brought some handouts for us. And we also have Mr. Charlie Painter is here with us, our water sewer superintendent. And uh, Dan Hartman, of course, our attorney. And Mr. Russell Large uh, and Kyle uh, with him as well from Enovia, our engineers. Thank you. Yes, and if you need to, an easel yeah. there, we have an easel if you, if you need that as well. And I think we can talk about from off this. Um, okay. <clears throat> Madam Mayor, Commissioners, my name is John Curtis, and I am the representative for St. Joe. I am the community manager for Summer Camp, which is located just down the street from y'all. So, per the conversation I guess we had last month, and for a site visit, it was held by um, City Carabell's uh, utility department and engineer with uh, my representative, Shane Dudley. Uh, the discussion came about and we talked about was, what do we do with our utilities as we try to grow, as we plan to grow at summer camp? And one thing I came on board in September with St. Joe, and one of the first things I ascertained was, St. Joe's a development company, we're not a utility company. And so we have a utility company, the St. James Island Utility Company. And right now we currently serve 21 houses, mm -hmm. a commercial center that does not currently have a restaurant. And because our the lack of affluent, our utility, our sewer plants not even being used. We currently pump the low stations um, instead of actually utilizing the sewer plant as, as it's designed. So, one of my jobs when I came to St. Joe was to, again, look at the community, figure out what we need to do to move the community forward. So, this morning I held a meeting with Franklin County Planner and discussed some of the items that I had talked previously with the mayor and her staff when they came to visit me. Uh, for example, we're planning to reopen a restaurant. We're planning to uh, build a, a boat ramp. And in doing so, we're planning to build auxiliary um, buildings to that boat ramp. We're planning to expand and to build out additional phases. Right now, we have 219 lots that are platted of the 499. We have 117 of those lots sold, but we only have 21 houses. So the community, in a sense, looks like it's vacant, but actually, it's is built out and sold out almost a third of its, uh, or a fourth of its number, total number of lots. My goal is to change that. Uh, this week we're actually closing tomorrow with a, a builder who's going to come in and build six new homes starting next month. I've got two other builders I'm working with who are going to come in and buy five to six lots at a time to build houses. 
And the goal is that we're going to start building in summer camp. And to do that, that brings them on the thought process of what do we do with our utilities. So we can continue as is. We have a water system, a really good water system, that we can utilize ourselves. But again, I have one person who runs that facility. We have a company that we're working with to help manage it as the license holders. And then we have to continue on our sanitary sewer system as is with pumping out those stations. That is not an optimal solution moving forward. So when I spoke with the mayor and her staff that about some ideas, the thought would be is how do we come up to a solution or a resolution where the city of Carabelle, who has a current utility plant, sewer and water systems, uh, which are within the vicinity of uh, summer camp, how do we work to connect those systems together to allow y'all to, which what the municipality does is provide services, to allow us, St. Joe, and summer camp, the developer, do what we want to do, which is build homes and build a community to support, be supported by your services. So we had the discussion and the thought is, is what's next? Um, there's lots of questions I know from watching the video of this board from last time. I'm here to answer as many questions I can. If I cannot answer them today, I will get back with you those answers. Uh, as I said to, to Commissioner Lunder, is that hopefully this is the first of many conversations we have moving forward to try to work together to build a better community for everybody. So I'll answer questions or if you have any direct questions of me or if uh, Shane Dudley, we'll try to answer them today or get back with you those answers. Well, I, we thank you for coming. We appreciate it, uh, you coming on our uh, invitation. Would you uh, go ahead and start out and explain each one of these sure. maps to us? <clears throat> Let's go to page three of the map, which is an overlay of the entire site. Uh, I imagine most of you all are more familiar with the project than I am because, again, you all have been here in, in the community and uh, seen it kind of grow and expand. So, if you Look at where the, the um, 319 and 98 meet, kind of the, the wishbone there. Right now we have our west sector of, of development there. Almost that entire west phase, which is our phase B, or parcel B as we call it, which is adjacent, is just west of our commercial sales center. That's almost entirely sold out. We have about 15 lots left in there to sell. So we're looking at bringing on the next phases, which would be to the west of Parcel B, which would be Parcel A. But as you see the area between Parcel A and B, which is the white area, it's um, Plummer Beach Club. That's where we're working with the county and, and we're working with the Corps of Engineers to do our boat ramp. The county has approved a boat ramp for summer camp. So that has been done, their comp plan has been amended. And at this point in time, it's just a matter of us working with, bring on the right engineering firm and the right consultants to take it through approval. And that location of water there is probably the best optimal location based on, it was previously dredged, my understanding, back as part of when the, the, the land was part of the military base uh, when they were training. So it, it's a dredged area of water. And so the Corps of Engineers is likely to go ahead and approve it at that location compared to any other location on the site. Um, so to the west of that location, we have, pre, we have preliminary platted lots. And so we'll work with Franklin County to go ahead and bring those lots on, on line. In doing that, we talked about to the west of that is your last D mark for your sewer plant. I guess it's a lift station of that location. And correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the, okay. The thought would be is that if we had that location, we could then, work to tie our two systems together. And it's about approximately one mile worth of length that a force main would have to go in. The one thing that someone, I worked, used to work previously for the city of Gainesville, so I understand when a municipality pulls a permit compared to a private developer pulling a permit when it deals with DOT, by the way. So the thought is, is that if we, as we move forward, we come up with solutions, if the, the plan is to tie our two systems together, is it work with y'all to pull the permit? Because, again, municipalities have a different route than, than a developer. And uh, the goal is time is always of the essence when things like this try to do. 
But that would also allow us to start marketing and selling those lots, bring them online, and again, provide a direct source back into the sanitary sewer system. The water system, my understanding, is, is also approximately in that same general area. So the goal would be is our wells are on the west side, on the northwest side of 98. So the thought is to tie into our wells for our water system, which then will tie back into our water plant, which is located on the east side of 319 across from our commercial property. You can see it located just next to the, the FSU Marina property on the right in the central part of the map. So we have a water plant there, and that water plant feeds the east and west sides of our development currently. And we have a, I would say it's probably a fairly robust water system, good quality water, um, good pressures. And so the thought is, is that if we did work out a relationship, we could either, that could be run independently, could be tied back into your system, but there's, there's multiple ways to work that. Also, we're working with FSU Marine Lab. They want to have tie into our water system and also our sewer system um, for their current existing facility. As well as they're looking to, they're working on getting approval for a 30,000 square foot research facility on the north side of 98 on their property, which then would be tied back in as well to the water and sewer systems. I know one of the questions is, is there capacity and what is that capacity going to be? Um, as we bring on all these items, these are capacity that go back to your system, but I do not believe it would be enough for us to set our system up as it's designed. Um, so, we also have a commercial center, part of our PUD with this county is that we're looking to bring on a, a hotel. Initially the thought is to do it as like a, a small 10 unit to 12 unit hotel and it would be geared towards you know, weekend, one night kind of stays, uh, people who just want to come down and visit but not want to rent a house. So the thought would be is that we would build that in the commercial center just east of our existing sales center and restaurant space. So that would be also bring additional fluid to the system as well as connection fees. Um, if you head east along past FSU's Green Lab, we come to parcel O. You'll see it's like a double horseshoe. That would be the next phase of development that I would want to bring on because it's proximity to the water and sewer connections. And then one of the discussions was is that the sewer line past that point would need to be extended the force main over to our east entrance, which is all the way to the far right side of the cage. And then it could connect with our force main that right now currently goes all the way back to the sewer plant. So we would do a bisect there and tie uh, our east side into a new force main that would be tied back to your west property, to your, your system, if we move forward. There's a lot of engineering design would have to go into place this and a lot of discussions. Um, but the path forward is there, is, you know, if we can work together to try to, to find it. We're also planning to work with the city on the northeast quadrant of the 319 and 98. There's kind of that, and the angle of the curvature. Uh, St. Joe owns property there that's outside of our summer camp PUD. And the goal is to rezone that commercial. And in doing so, we'll the goal is to bring a grocery store slash convenience store slash kind of catch all for people who will want to stay in the area to provide services, um, as well as uh, behind it locating a, a homeowner's um, RV and boat storage. Right now, the currently, we do not have any place for homeowners to store their RVs or their boats if they come to the property. And so the goal would be is to designate a de designated area on the north side that would be back there and again it would be tied back in but it would just be for storage. And then moving forward I would develop the rest of the east side over time and tying back into our force main system there which then ultimately could be tied back to your force main. So 
this is not a project that's going to happen overnight. <laughs> As you all know, it's been sitting dormant for about 10 years. And uh, I think that it can be built out in, in a timely manner, but uh, 10 years probably is what I'm looking at build out based on the current sales and uh, events. So what questions can I answer for you all? Well, I'll, I'll just uh, follow up right quick with your build out in 10 years. Are you talking about build out of the entire, um, you said you had the 219 platted? That's uh, correct. I would be building out of the entire 499 lots. Oh, the 400 in and, and, and 10 years? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And these uh, orange colored um, areas that you pointed out here to the west, towards our, our connection here, uh, the end of our line, right. and then this little horseshoe, how many lots are there? Uh, there's, I believe, 58 and a parcel A, 57, 57. Right now, we may lose a, uh, one or two by, mm -hmm. when we do the boat ramp. Mm -hmm. And then a parcel O, I believe there is 21 lots. Okay, I see it, it says it there. Right. And, that, and then these areas you're going to concentrate on first. That is correct. Well, because, again, the west side of the project is, again, 90% sold out. Uh, and so I want to be able to do is bring lots that, uh, the most viable lots on the west side, which also makes sense if we're going to tie them back into your system, would be on the, that parcel A. John, in that parcel A, is that where 90% of your sale out is? You said on the west end? Parcel B. Is parcel B is parcel, what I thought. Yeah, parcel B is where we currently have 98% or 90% of the sales there. But that remaining 57 lots to the west is parcel A. Correct. We bring that online and those sales, I think, because they're, it, it is gold frontage and um, based on the location, I think we'll have the best return on sales. And so the goal is, again, to build that momentum back up at summer camp. Again, a project that's been sitting dormant for 10 years and we need to do is rebuild, rebrand, and bring it back with a new look and feel to uh, get people. The goal is also to be at homes in there in the low 300,000s so that people actually can afford a place to be there. Refresh my memory. Yes, sir. Parcel A. Yes, sir. Parcel A. Parcel A is not, is it or is it not a part of the original summer camp proposal? Parcel A is actually all the parcels you see here are all right part of. Uh, yes, sir. They're all part of the original PUD. Right. So no platting. There's a plenary plat that was recorded again per the planner's discussion this morning, and we would have to do a site plan approval and go through that process with the county to get those approved and and then final plat approved. Okay. Well, at the 117 lots that are sold, and you, if you watched our video, then you you saw that we were concerned about uh, tap fees that. Uh, pre-sold tap fees. Has that happened on the 117 lots that are sold? My understanding is that we only apply a tap fee when they apply for a building permit. And so okay. of the 117, only 21, 22, yes. 22 <coughs> homes have sold and been under permitted. So those would only be the tap fees. So the remaining lots would still be paying a tap fee. Okay. To connect for water and sewer connections. And do you all did you all bring a list of your base rates and and tap fees at, at, with you? No, you don't have that with you today. We can provide that information. Okay. Are are you all on a tiered rate system where every three thousand gallons or every thousand gallons? Yes. Of use? Yeah. Yes, you are. Okay. Right for the for the water usage. Yes. Yes, yes okay. we are. Standards uh, applicable for this uh, mm -hmm. state of Florida. Water Management District. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> you have a spray field location up there at your on the sewer. Right. I haven't been out there. I've just briefly seen your water plant. So, out of, and Shane can talk more about the sewer plant if you want to go into details. So right now the sewer plant, when we sold the adjacent property to the sewer plant uh, two years ago, two or three years ago, that um, we kept access. We actually own the road access and we own the, the property of the sewer plant. 
Uh, there is a spray field there. We actually have a, uh, what's the size of the tank system? That's the sewer plant. No, no, the tanks itself. Oh. You know it's so good? No. Okay. I'm doing two. Oh, I just did. Go left. The capacity will. But we have, you know, the capacity was originally designed for two projects. For summer camp and for the property that was going to be constructed on the river. That land was sold off to the, the Mormons, and therefore it no longer has tied, or will never be tied back into the system. So the plant was actually oversized substantially for its use. Uh, that's one reason why we never tied back, stayed on the connections and, and utilized the plant, because it, we don't create enough affluent to actually operate the plant mm -hmm. today. And uh, so in the beginning, you, you all talked about turning over the, the facilities, the entire facilities, uh, the well, the, the, the wells that are to the east, to the west, the farthest west, and then the, the water plant, the water treatment plant, uh, almost directly across from your commercial area, and then to the, to the east, the, the sewer plant. So are you, uh, what, are you the easement, the roadways, the how much land, what, you know, what are you all so, thinking about? Well, and again, the thought was in the initial discussion was, what do we do with this? You know, we don't want to own a sewer, water and sewer utility company. What are our options? And so the question is, is how do we work out a relationship with City Caraval, and what does that relationship end up being? Is it, you know, do we do you all manage our facilities that we own and maintain, but you manage and, and operate as you know, or do we somehow work on a relationship where we transfer the ownership of those items to you? Uh, those items that uh, one is above my pay grade. Two is <laughs> that, uh, but the options are there. The goal is that we come with a solution that works for the city of Carabao and for summer camp and the homeowners of summer camp, because that's the, the, the ultimate is that they're going to be the ones who are going to be asking you know 20 years from now. Who manages my water system? Who takes care of my sewer system? And the goal is, is uh, come up with a plan. However that plan may turn out between us, that is still to be worked out. There's, uh, again, we have three wells. Shane, two? Two wells. Two wells system over there on, on the west side of, of 319.98. And those tie back into our water plant, which is over on the east side. Um, and then we have the sewer plant, which again, we have a force main that runs all the way there from the east side, but the east and west sides do not connect right now. So we'd have to come up with a solution for that. And again, the solution would be if we tie into your system, there's again about one mile of distance between where your DMARC is for your sewer plant, the station, and where we would tie in. So lots of details still to be discussed and, and probably at an engineering level initially to see what the feasibility of these items are. But I will say from St. Joe's position is we're, we're here to talk, we're here to figure out a solution and to try to what's, figure out the best long term for everybody. What is, and, and you know, as you say, John, I, I, it's running in my mind, uh, uh, there's a lot of hoops to jump through. Uh, a lot of questions that can't be ironed down right at this point, but, uh, talks can be initiated. What is the thoughts currently of the company's position on payment? I understand what you said about a, a, a public municipality. The permitting process might be a little bit easier than it is for private. But uh, to pay for that one mile of line, I think that's has there been some thought put into that already? Absolutely. I mean, and here's why. I mean, I'm a, I'm a planner. I'm a guy that wants to know all the details about what next steps and next steps after that and next steps after that. Yeah. So we've had those questions internally. And the question gets back to is, what's it going to cost? How's it going to benefit the, both parties? Because, again, this relationship has to benefit both parties. And then what, how soon do we have to do it? And how quickly does it, everything have to be kind of done? So we're looking at all those aspects of cost, time, money, in the sense of money being the, the how far out do we have to fix it in, what is the city's position going to be. Uh, someone who's worked for this probably understands that you know, if long term you're going to be wanting to look at grant money to, to support, support this system and expand it if y'all take over it. 
So again, we'll forward to all on that aspect as well. Because we have time right now in a sense. Nothing has to be done yesterday. So the goal is, is that we can work together, come up with a good plan, look at where the money's coming from, when the money needs to be spent, and what needs to go in the ground in the stages. Because it doesn't happen to happen overnight. I agree with your statement. It leads into the, also the ownership part of it. Uh, agree. And so the thought would be is to, again, evaluate the total plan, timing, and ownership. Uh, because, again, my position, and this is me speaking, John Curtis, who works for St. Joe, has said to my bosses, we don't, this is the only utility company that we own and manage. And, it, it, you know, again, it's a, for us to try to do that, it's challenging. So we want to do is make sure that we have the best resources available to the people we're selling homes to and lots to. And that would mean it's to bring in the right people who do manage, which is a government entity, manage utility companies. When you own them, you manage them, it's, it's what cities do. It's a service that y'all provide. And so the thought is moving forward is to come up with a plan how that, that transfer could be done and what does it entail. I agree with that statement. Several years ago, uh, we had gotten a document from the Northwest Water Management and they recommended Caravel being a regional supplier of water so that we benefit from uh, rather than have many plants have one or set two central. And uh, they were supposed to send me that document. It hadn't gotten in here yet. I thought that's what my father was telling me. But uh, in those days, uh, we had a good deal offered that uh, they would build, y'all would build the pipe and just turn everything over to us. And uh, that didn't fly too much then because we said, well, you know, what's this going to go? We can't afford to do that, even if we got it free. So, uh, but I am in favor of Caravel being a regional water supply system and economy of effort. The extra numbers of businesses that would add to our effect would certainly create a tremendous amount of income, you know, then minus expenses to see how that would work out. But uh, I am in favor in that sense of expanding our system and to our capacity. Uh, our, the grant was given to us to build our system based on our becoming a regional uh, processor. So, well, and we I don't have that deal left, do we? Not today. But it doesn't mean the deal. <laughs> Can we, we talk about it? Every, every day is a new deal. <laughs> okay. So, um, Again, we all went through a downturn. We all kind of changed our business models. We all looked at things differently today. But moving forward, the goal is that St. Joe and the City of Carabao can find a solution. And that's kind of why I'm here today. And I do appreciate and thank you all for inviting me. Um, again, we're trying to be as open with our partners. And, and the city is our partner, uh, just like Franklin County is. So to move summer camp forward and to create something there that would be a benefit not just today, but 50 years from now or longer. And so I agree that you need to have a regional water system. It makes sense. You can provide the services again long term. And one thing I'll say is municipalities are here forever. And so, and y'all provide those services. Again, St. James Island Utility Company was created for the sole purpose of multiple projects, which that changed after the downturn. Mm -hmm. So we're now, we've got to rethink where we are and what we need to do. But at the same time, trying to partner up with y'all. I am surprised at the largeness of your development here. The when, when we were talking about this, all I knew about is that little corner down there where you got some building. Yes, sir. Actually, it's deceiving it's because it does sit back in, and a lot of it hasn't been developed. Okay. But the goal is, is that you see the big plan, the master plan, mm -hmm. and my goal is to develop that. As I said, I'm, I'm looking at 10 years. I mean, that's you know, a little over 250 units. To 60 units that uh, in 10 years that's I mean I think it can be done and done the right way uh, and also again you know, bring it on gradually so that we do it right. So but the main question is and, and, and um, both Commissioner Millinder and, and Commissioner Allen have said is the money and the, and the, and the way that we could connect first of all the sewer from the from the Sands condo area to your your western 
area. Uh, excuse me, your, yes, your most western right. area. So the thought would be is, is again, working with your engineers and, and our engineers, is to come up with a solution that says this is what it's going to cost because there's going to be some reworking of uh, that force main at our um, lift station now, basically to reverse flow, because currently our, our lift stations were designed to flow to the east mm -hmm. on that side, so we're now reversing flow to flow back to the west. It can be done, it's just a matter of sitting down with engineers and coming with a plan that works, that's cost effective, and then looking again at time and, and money and when it has to be spent and, and how it's spent. Mm -hmm. But again, if the plan is to move forward and tie in, y'all, I think we can find a solution. Mm -hmm. and, and then also the cost of tying into the well system. There. Yes, the same thing we do is do an evaluation to determine working together to figure out what is the best plan, when does that plan need to occur, and what other steps need to occur before and after that connection is actually done. I have a question, but it's, it's kind of trivial to, well, to the next step where we need to go. It would be answered in in, uh, in the process of what we what I think we're about to go through. So, and it has to do with John. Just quickly, I'll go ahead and, and propose it. You were talking about the very east end and the infrastructure in the ground. Uh, did I understand you to say you do or do not have infrastructure for the sewage flow to come back to the west? Currently, there is not. There's a um, so, uh, what, around the sales center chain, just, just west of the, or east of the bridge? Just east of the, the driveway of the marine lab where it stops. Yeah, so just okay. east of the marine lab. But you're all the way back to the marine lab from the very east end of the development. No, no, from okay. the west side. Okay. So from the west side, we stop right now, our force main stops just past the marine lab. Gotcha. So, and it does not pick back up until the, the entrance to the east entrance. Um, the plan for us originally in the design was to take the force main through the, the property, back through the property. Uh, so we would basically uh, uh, jack and bore under the wetland areas. Understand. And, and again, it's, it's not a cheap path to take. And so when we start talking with the staff from the city that there's a better alternative method to try to, to do this that's more cost effective. And the goal is to find the most cost effective path moving forward. And, and come up with a plan. Again, how we tie those two sections together, when we tie those together, can be tied in how we develop some of the parcels adjacent so that the cost can be offset as well as connection fees put in. Okay, just another consideration that I was thinking of. The east, the east is tied to the wastewater plant itself, but the whole property is not tied together. Okay. In the So I'm going to ask kind of a hard question. Um, I'm trying to be, I don't, I want to be tactful. Now, are you going to be able to start developing these lots and putting actual houses on them before you, do you, do you need to settle up your, your sewer issue, you know, who, how, because you can't, I'm, Right now, you're pumping out your lift stations as needed, daily, weekly, whatever, uh, with just like we, we pump out a, a, a private residence septic tank. Can you continue to operate like that and, and sell out these, these in parcel A? You can continue to yes. operate that way? If we had to, yes. Mm -hmm. It's not ideal because we would do as a new lift station to collect parcel A, mm -hmm. and then those, all those home sites in there would go into that lift station. And we would pump it out just like we're doing parcel B mm -hmm. and the sales center and the, the east side of the property. Mm -hmm. It's not ideal, but the goal is is that, and we would also work to tie parcel A to parcel B, so that eventually when that that sewer plant, because the other option for us to look at right now is to tie the west side to the east side, and then push everything back to the sewer plant, and then bring in a small package system or a skid system to the sewer plant. And using that because again it's a much smaller use of system, and but again there's costs associated. Um, so the question is, where is the best use of our money being spent? And again, if the long-term plan is to do something totally radically different than what was originally designed, then let's look at what where we put our money. But yes, it's not going to stop me from bringing those other parcels online. Mm -hmm. My goal after my meeting this morning with the city, the county planner, is to start 
worked with our engineers to do the final plat designs, the final site civil designs, and to bring those parcels online so that we can actually, uh, hopefully, six to nine months from now, I'll be marketing and building on those parcels. Yeah, we hope the sales will pick up enough to do that. I think they will. Actually, based on the people I've talked with who have been in this market for years, and they feel like this is a great place for them to be. Uh, they kind of, one film has described it, it's that diamond in the rough that has been forgotten. Well, I agree. And, and uh, from a positive standpoint, I really, I hope it goes that way. So but, right. uh, I was sitting on the Franklin County Planning and Zoning Board and approved this uh, uh, when it happened. And there was an excitement then. And I still want to maintain that excitement the summer camp grows and this area grows from a resident and a citizen standpoint, not just a city commissioner standpoint. But anyway, there was excitement there for that to grow. And then things happen in our lives. And uh, we, we got to project ahead, we got ahead and look forward, but they're not always certain. So we have to look at those and try to weigh things out as we go. And that's one reason why the, the, the one of the game changers that's going to change summer camp is the boat ramp and the potential for the convenience grocery store there. Uh, because those will then drive more people. We're also looking to do a little RV center on the north side uh, where we take some of our lots, we plot the lots, but instead of building houses, we work with the county to go ahead and allow us to have people park their RVs and, instead of building a house right away. And again, the goal is to get people to the community to see what an awesome place it is. And so the more ways we can drive people to the community to, to be able to see those things, and again, one of the, the opportunities here is to say, we're tied in with City of Carabao's utilities. I mean, that's just, it isn't a selling factor that we could use long term. With you on growth, and I hope, you know, hope the best. Thank you. Now, when you, when you spoke with <coughs> Mr. The planner, Mr. Currington? Yes. Did? Okay. Yes, then, I didn't know if the, Mr. Pierce was sitting in or what. He was oh. there as well, but okay. not for the time being. Then, and, and you mentioned, so the boat ramp is approved. Yes, the, yes. the county actually has modified the, their comp plan to include that in that. Very good. Did you utter the words anything about, did you all discuss the convenience store? Was that? Yes, we did. Uh -huh. All right, so that piece of parcel is outside of the PUD. Mm -hmm. So um, I would like to rezone that commercial, but he felt there would be no objections to it based on its location. We will have services, your water, sewer available, uh, electrics there, and mm -hmm. concurrency is not an issue for traffic. Mm -hmm. So he felt like that the, they could support that uh, movement of that uh, moving forward. Of course, the design of architecture would look and feel like uh, summer camp style. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't be your typical convenience store. It would look more like a, <coughs> an old tiny bait and fish shop. And then the RV community, did you? We did. So we, uh, um, so again, the thought process is not to turn into a standard, what you see, atypical RV community, mm -hmm. but it's to utilize the lots that were originally designed, go ahead and plot those lots, get an overlay of some form to allow us to be able to, to, instead of building on those lots right away, that people could buy those lots and then they can have people come and park their RVs and utilize our services, the, the restaurant, the pool, access to the beach, the boat ramp, all those facilities together so that uh, they can benefit and then eventually they can decide if they want to buy a lot or they can build on, if they bought that lot, they could build a house there. We have an RV community in Caravelle that's operating like that right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the goal was also to, to shield it so we would have buffers back from the 98. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it, it eventually will be a subdivision, so or part of our subdivision, so we don't want it to be you know, right there um, in everyone's view. So, and that's this area on the north side, right? Yes, ma'am, right. that is correct. It would be okay. right there on the So that is, that is separated from the rest of your correct. subdivisions, your communities, so they would have their own uh, place now would this have to be a is there a homeowners association there yes actually there I am the president of the HOA okay so that would be it still have to be approved by our HOA mm -hmm. uh, as part of that they would uh, the individual lot owners would pay their dues just like they would anybody else mm -hmm. and they would be bound by the, the governance restrictions that apply towards any homeowner or tenant renting a home And, and you 
you discuss with them the uh, potential or your, your projections to build a, a small motel, motel area? Yeah, actually, that's part of a PUD where I, we're allowed up to 50 units. Uh, again, the, the hotel starting out would be a 10 unit hotel. That's our goal. Uh, we actually then would like to grow it and do some individual bedroom uh, on stilts. Uh, and actually, I, my goal would be is to, to get the Corps of Engineers and the county to allow us to actually put some over the water. Um, again, the goal is to make this as unique a place as possible. And, you know, if people want to be outside, it's a beautiful place. Uh, there's a lot of nature there, the birds, the fishing, the, the, just the, the ecotourism itself. The goal is let's make this place so unique that people go, I want to be there. I remember the motel being part of the world. So... And, uh, and again, the hotel would have the same look architectural feel. So again, it's not this, you know, nothing against the, you know, the name brand hotels out there, but this would not be that look. Uh, does anyone in the uh, audience have questions? Not Charlie. Well, Charlie would, I mean, do you have questions, sir? Oh, no, I don't have any right now. Okay. And how about Russell, Kyle? Um, okay, so the the complete um, a build out of, of the property would include 499 residential units. Correct. Uh, 50 Here. unit hotel. I'm going to grab the piece. Okay. <clears throat> so per the PUD, we're allowed 499 dwelling units, 35,000 square feet of non-residential land use. Um, there is the up to 50 unit hotel, public safety facility, and auxiliary non-resident development such as gatehouse storage facilities and maintenance facilities. Okay, and so the, the commercial area you mentioned with the grocery, that is not part of the PED? That is correct. That so is that would be above from, that? that? That's separate from the PED, okay. and so that's, and as I said, it's outside, so we would have to do a rezoning and then do a site plan as part of that. Okay. So I'm just curious, 10,000 square feet and roughly? Yeah, probably. I mean, typical, you know, 8 to 10. Um, and then, of course, we would have some bathrooms over at uh, um, where we do our um, boat and RV storage right. for people there to have clean outs and stuff of that sort. Oh, that's a good question. The, the RV storage is also not part of the PD? That's correct, not a part of the PD. No. Well, did, you, uh, did you speak to them about, uh, the, Mr. Currington, about the boat and RV storage location? Yes, and he was supportive of that as, as we designed that commercial component there. Uh, we would do is, is, because again, the goal is, is that would be HOA for HOA, you know, homeowners who live in the area mm -hmm. or come down to visit and not open to the public. And so it would, even though it's kind of a commercial uh, zoning designation, we would actually restrict it uh, moving forward so that something happened later on if you know we're not someone's not going to go in there just go straight to okay. and your uh, boat ramp then that will be just for your for your community correct right now the goal is that it would just be for the community mm -hmm. we'll you know again as the community builds out we would see there's opportunities for us to tie in and provide some uh, partnerships with local other businesses mm -hmm. in the areas who we can actually joint venture on some other things mm -hmm. one more question um do you, uh, have you gone so far as having an appraiser uh, consider what your absorption rate would be? You know, how many, how many units you may sell a year? And I'm just curious if So I've done, a feasible, or I've done a feasible years. analysis. Right now we're looking to try to bring on 10 to 20 this year. Okay. And then the goal would be to, to move that forward. Um, and then it, it could taper down to five a year, but you know, it could also taper up to 30 a year, mm -hmm. depending on the market share. Um, again, the goal is to design homes in the community that are marketable. I mean, um, you know, what we have to, I keep telling myself every day is, this is not 30A. This is, you know, if I got them, you know, toasted, it, it's got its own feel and vibe. And, and there's a, you know, the, the market share who wants that is there. They just want to buy affordable and, you know, home sites and, and houses. Well, I, I need some guidance on to as to where we go from here. Um, you, you have an idea? Well, I, I, I'm just just kind of shooting from the hip okay. today, but 
if, if it pleases the board. Uh, just, just considering some, some options, I jotted them down here and, and listened to the discussion. Uh, seems like to me the options would be, uh, one, one option would be to connect directly to the city of Carville's system, whether it's water, sewer, one, or both, uh, as a bulk customer. And that would bring into question the maintenance then of the collection system. Um, would be responsible for that. Uh, second, the second option would be a complete takeover of the system by Caravel. Uh, and uh, that system could be run independent of Caravel's primary water and sewer system. In other words, there's a, there's a well and water system here on site. There's a, uh, a wastewater treatment plant on site that could be operated where it is. And uh, thirdly, a, a, a complete takeover of the system by Caravel uh, that that would connect back to Caravel's primary system. Um, that, that's kind of the three uh, options that that I that I just jotted down while we we're talking. Uh, and then Dan, while while we were sitting here, Dan pulled up the, the annual report for from the Public Service Commission. Um, and I mean, as you can imagine, with 21 homes, the revenue is not stellar by any stretch. It's not good. Uh, so they're, you know, they're they're posting a loss with with 21 homes in there, as you would expect. Um, so you know, at at some point, it it would it would show uh, a, a profit, um, and I, I don't know what at what point that would be. But um, that's kind of on I was making. Yeah, I, I think it um, that may play into an option where the the takeover could be phased in some way. And that's kind of what uh, I've been thinking because again, nothing has to happen overnight. The goal is a long-term plan. You know, again, working together to find out what's the best plan, the best timing, as we build out and, and y'all expand, and, and so we kind of come together at a single point where it's the right time, and we've planned it, and so now we transition, we transition parts here, part there, and then ultimately there's a, a complete takeover. But it's done with a plan in place that everyone agrees to that's based on time and money. And I had thought of... Uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, in phases, or the first step would be, and we all would know what the first step would be, that's your western side to hook up with our most eastern Correct. terminal. And that's why so, I wanted Madam Mayor to bring uh, on that, that parcel A, because again, it's that direct connection, it's the closest link, and it makes sense then to transition from parcel B to parcel A, as well as the commercial center, and also picks up the, the FSU main line. Which is very, very important. We've been over there, sat down with them. They're, they're ready to be done with what they have. And I've also met with FSU facilities in Tallahassee uh, twice now to discuss how they plan to do this. And certainly, we all know that there's not a, a profit here for Terrebell either at this point. Even, even if all of the connection expenses were covered, there's still not a profit because there's just not that many. You have 21 homes, but they're, they're spread out between your east side and west side. They're not all on the west side, even. No, 21 homes. Won't. And one of the things that... The right? There's 16 on the west end. That is correct. Actually, there's two under construction. So, and the Britain Ray Bill is six more on the west side. But one of the things I've talked with uh, to reach out to the homeowners who do own lots on the west side is they've been wanting to see some momentum. They want to see some activity. They want to see what the plan is. And so now that we're starting to put a plan in place, the, the boat ramp and all these other things, they're more inclined to want to build a home on their lot than they've some of them owned since 2004, 2003. And so um, they the time is, is now to start moving forward, and activity breeds activity. And so basically everything mm -hmm. that you have then, uh, 
west of the FSU lab and the, and the mm -hmm. FSU lab would all is all connected now to, it would this, be. Uh, to, to lift stations. Um, the, on the other the other the east of the FSU lab, that is headed up to your um, sewer plant Correct. on the north. The, the parts that are, the parts that are planted right now are tied into one single lift station, mm -hmm. which then grab or then force main feeds to our sewer plant. Um, the horseshoe area, where, where is that? Do you have that tied so into this? this it would be tied into yes, because of its proximity to FSU, uh -huh. a short extension to that location would be cost effective. Okay, so it's not there now. No, at that no, point. but it, that that would be so. That would be my next phase of development. Mm -hmm. And again, the goal would be as we move farther to the east, and that's why I said we come up with a plan that logistically works as. We take down different parcels. We start adding on to the, the overall system and come with, again, looking at cost and time. And then ultimately, we could still always pump the east side lift station until a point that it's ready to tie in and be transferred over. Nothing precludes us from continuing to do that. And that cost is not compared to the other two side. Commissioner Allen, did you have a question? Uh, I just have a comment. Uh, any kind of investment like this is, you know, it takes a while to get a return on the investment. But, you know, I keep thinking of 19, 20, 20 years from now, what will it be? Uh, and, you know, we can't stop growth. I'd love to build a wall around Franklin County. <laughs> I'm going to take it down. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I, that's they not a court. reality because we're going to have immigrants <laughs> in our community. And uh, uh, I love Caribbean for what it is. And one of the parties is it's old Florida. And uh, uh, I hope that in all the plans that we do, we can keep that atmosphere and, and let it still be a unique part of Florida. I hate to see it become a megapolis. No, sir, I will say my goal is that you've seen the architecture and the style and the community there and the way it's laid out. The goal is to continue that so that, again, 50 years from now, people drive by there and go, they did it right. Yeah. Right now, we're going west to Lighthouse Estates. And then, you know, but, but that's really what the Florida Water Management asked us to do, is to, to be a regional processor. Uh, ask Charlie, uh, How's our capacity now? Do we have a lot of room for more? Well, we're approaching half capacity. We still have a lot of room, long way to go. Mm -hmm. And that would have to be expanded more <coughs> in our area, wouldn't it, later, to do this? Um, it would take a long time, but yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. eventually. Yeah. But this is, even though there's no prop to be made for, for the water and sewer system, this is an investment in the future. Mm -hmm. what, we're, what we're thinking about. That's the point. That, uh, yes. yeah. Anybody opens up a business, don't expect to make a mm -hmm. profit for four or five years. That's mm -hmm. a good tax deduction yeah. for it, a while. It, it would be the best if we could just figure out a way to break even, mm -hmm. to pay for the maintenance, and operations, staff, that, that mm -hmm. type thing, just some way just to break even so that it doesn't affect our other rate payers. You know, we, I, you may have read what's going on in our sister city here, and we had to raise our rates a few years ago, and it was, it was so we had to be very gentle about it. And the DEP let us tear it up over three years, but you know, and we'll have to raise rates again, but we don't necessarily want to have to do it to fund something where there's no income coming. Well, and, and now is not a bad time for us to actually sit down and have that conversation as we start moving forward with more development. Do we need to put a plan in to raise our rates um, over the next five, ten years, and how do we do it incrementally so that, again, the existing homeowners who there aren't being overly burdened, but as new people come on, that they can absorb some of that expense long term. So I, I'm all for working again with, with your staff and color solutions. But I believe that they're on uh, on city water and sewer. Anyone who's on city water and sewer have to have the standard rates that, that we offer. Is that correct? No, we can charge an outside city rate, but it is statutorily capped. 
But yes. we do charge an outside. We just, yeah, we have an mm -hmm. inside and outside. Uh -huh. and, and also, depending on this, um, there are, if we classify it as a different class of service, uh -huh. we can charge a different rate. Here. Oh, kind of yeah. like St. James Bay. But we need a finding in order to establish that new, new class of service. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything other than what I've already, I just repeat myself saying that I'm in favor of, of going forward with the discussions and I'll say the same thing that I said at the last meeting. Uh, I'm, I'm not excited and, and uh, I don't think I would support, I feel positive I wouldn't support burdening the citizens of Caravelle with anything that we do outside. Now I'm highly in favor of expanding and growing uh, as long as we're not burdening city of Caravelle residents to pay for somebody else's uh, water and sewer or whatever it may be. But I'm very open to moving forward with the discussions and seeing where we can go with this. I'm, I'm very interested. That's just my opinion. Thank you. And I am too, and we want to make sure that we're not going to burden all of our rate payers exactly. in and out of the city of Caravelle. Good point. <laughs> yeah. So the initial project would be to connect the pipes, pipeline. Uh, as part of bringing on phase A, mm -hmm. parcel A. Yeah, that would be my thoughts if we did that because then it would actually, there would be people connecting with lot sales and homes being built as part of that, that then again makes connection fees and actually brings on use. So it's more than just for putting a pipe in that sense. And as I, as I said, it's all about timing because again, one way or another, we're going to spend some money. The question is, how do we maximize the use of that funds? So then, do we need to have another meeting? Do we need to uh, have engineers meet engineers, or uh, you know, I, I, Charlie? That's what I would think. The uh, engineers need to get together, get their heads together, and bring it back to us. Mm -hmm. Give us some information on the specifications and, and the uh, facilities that are that they have and the capacities and, and the permitting and, and cost. I yes. think cost uh -huh. is going to be the big mm -hmm. and time. And time. I agree. But cost is going to be tied directly with that time. That's correct. And cost is going to include all those specifics as far as operation, infrastructure, right on, from A to Z. Correct. Yes. So do we uh, want to entertain a motion to set the engineer in place to do something like a, a, an analysis, a cost analysis? A, a I'd make a motion to that effect. Okay. I would second. All right, so we have a motion by Commissioner Allen uh, to uh, approve the engineer to conduct a cost analysis on, on let me, can I ask you, sure. but he's already on, on phase one, on the phase one yes. the eastern mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that all right? Does he need to, um, Mr. Hartman, amend his motion? I'm sorry. The motion was to have have Russell do a cost, mm -hmm. basically a financial analysis yeah. on it, and you're talking about a menu to separate this into two pieces, as far as the west end, east end. Yeah. I, I would, I would. You can consider I mean, that. To me, problem. would be part of his. I, I think. I mean, again, my my thoughts, and Russell and I were whispering back and forth, is that it would have to be phased. And that would include both, both okay. pieces, but the financial analysis, to me, would stretch out over time because you're basically St. James Utility Company is operating in the hole and has been since day one up to this point. So digging, you know, the extent to which we take over, um, and the extent to which that, you know, who's bearing that that deficit and for how long, and that's the model that Russell needs to develop. And when he builds that model, in theory, with assumptions being made based on Mr. Curtis has talked to us about here as far as development coming online, that literally will show you when it breaks past above water and it starts you know, breaking even point. Break even point. 
and you know everybody then takes everything with a grain of salt, knowing what we've already been through on projections of growth that were gangbusters in 06, 07, and flat through 2020, 2030, and 2010. Right, so then we have this motion mm -hmm. uh, by Commissioner Allen then to uh, direct Russell Large mm -hmm. to move forward with a cost analysis on this on this uh, potential right. project and a second by Commissioner Mathis. Is there further discussion? Just a quick question to Russell, and I know he can't answer me specifically, but are we looking at a large cost? Um, I may, I may need to. I may need to get back with you. I figured but, you would. Uh, I'm not trying to hold you down to a specific. Yeah, I understand. Dollar. Understand. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd I'd like to get back with you. Okay. All right. With um, so we're still in discussion. Would you, would we prefer Russell to bring us a task order? Yes. yes. Sorry, I was okay. that. All right. So we have this motion, but it seems like we might prefer a task order so we would then I would recommend that we don't approve this motion and then that we entertain another motion for uh, Russell to bring us a task order on what it would cost to do a cost analysis. We have a meeting March. next Thursday. Mm -hmm. So is a task order? Sure. Okay. So mm -hmm. we could answer Mr. Commissioner Allen's motion next Thursday. Mm -hmm. So we would we would need to uh, vote uh, as as we unfortunately we would oppose this one, yes, and would. then and then we would entertain a motion to have uh, Russell with Anovia bring us a task order at our March seventh meeting. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, even know if it would be necessary for a motion for a task order because you're going to approve or deny the task order anyway in March that he prepares. Do we want to vote this one for this yes, one? Yes, we're going to. I'm going to call for a vote on this one. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? Uh, Aye. Uh, and uh, any uh, so that 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 doesn't carry. But uh, I think I would I would prefer a motion for a task order. Make a motion. We ask Russell for a task order to be presented at our regular meeting next Thursday night. Second. For this uh, summer camp proposal project. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Millinder uh, requesting Russell to bring us a task order on uh, uh, performing a cost analysis, and that's second by Commissioner Allen. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and then that motion carries. And thank you all. We wanted to, to make sure we do it right. We <laughs> have to move one gentle step at a time. So is there anything else here we would like to discuss with Mr. Curtis while he's with us? And Sean? Shane. Shane? Shane. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, That's a very important habitat area for fish. I've been told by the people from over at the Marine Lab that 90% of the gag grouper in the Gulf of Mexico are born right in that little area. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Well, yeah, I, that's for all over the Gulf. Wow. I, I will say this. We've met several times with the Fishing Marine Lab, Dr. Uh, Coleman, and uh, her staff, and they are very supportive of us moving forward with this project. Mm -hmm. And as I said, my goal is to build it the right way. And again, taking, you know, that's why we, we moved the, the boat ramp over to the west side so it does not impact any of the things that they do in their, at the facility there. And again, so they're supporting us on working together. Right, and well, I actually look forward to the progress of it as well. Mm -hmm. I do too. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Madam Mayor, thank you, and Mr. for inviting me to today okay. to speak with y'all. I you will attend next Thursday night. Uh, if, uh, I'll get the information, and I'll also work with your uh, consultant to make sure that he has any information he needs from us. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you both for thank coming. So we appreciate you taking your afternoon off to, to be here with us. Y'all have a great day. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. And then, do we? <laughs> hello, Mr. Bell. Do we want to take a uh, uh, a recess? Let's yes, ma'am.
Okay. <laughs> we've been, uh, well, an hour. We've been an hour and five minutes. Okay, and so we'll talk about our next uh, meeting here um, at our uh, special meeting on February 26, 2019. Uh, item number two, discussion and possible action regarding outstanding issues at the new City Hall building here at 1206 Highway 98 East. I like that. I like to say that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have a list. I hope the staff has a list and some other folks have some things they might need to discuss. Uh, but number one, I want y'all to please speak into your microphones. Uh, we had originally talked about a Bluetooth system. It's $10,000, somewhere around in there. We just decided we better stop spending for now maybe in a couple of years. So we're working with our old system, and it's good. It seems like it's doing pretty good. During our uh, commission meeting last month, though, Keisha and I did notice that people were cupping their ears. And you're not alone. Let's see here. Okay. All right. And then I, I just wanted to bring to your attention, you see the temporary sign is over there that was outside. And uh, we're, Courtney and I are discussing um, having a frame put around that. And now the side that you're looking at shows some rust and a couple of scratches. That's the bad side. The other side is, is looking real good. Um, framing that and putting it up back here. So I, I just wanted to, you know, kind of run that past you. That's you don't have a city seal or anything, and that could be there temporary for you know a few years until until we get a city seal. What are you talking about? Let's put it back here on this wall. Oh, oh. about building a frame for it. Yeah. yeah, Greg has graciously offered to volunteer and build a frame and paint it the same color as the outside of the building. Um, and he may put some decorative rope on it. I don't know. But anyway, that's that's the tentative plans for that sign. That's why she sits in here. Um, I, I wanted to ask our the vinyl floor. We have you know some good vinyl floors, and we want to keep those in in uh, and and our windows in like new condition as long as we can. Are they on a routine schedule for good regular mopping? No. And Miss Barbara's cleaning them every day, but I don't have anything for anyone to come in. Okay, and the windows too, interior and exterior. So that's something that you know we should consider to you know for keeping the, the building maintained. I think. And I I noticed I was in the police department today, and they really need a um, an inside carpet doormat over there, um, kind of like the one they have outside the door, but inside there. They, they do a lot of in and out over that way. Um, the and inside, like inside their door up? Yeah, they've got one on the outside. Something like that, Chief? Yes, yes okay. ma'am. Uh, the upholstery on all of our chairs, except those two are new right there, uh, was cleaned. Uh, Y'all all know that. Um, some folks thought our chairs back here were brand new. But the frames need to be cleaned on them, you know, to, to really bring them back or, or make them like new. And um, we'd have to hire somebody to do that, I guess. I don't know who, but um, it would be nice if they were, were thoroughly cleaned. Um, then I wanted to ask her, the heat and air thermostats, are they, uh, they uh, can they be adjusted by Wi-Fi access somehow? They can. Uh -huh. Do all staff members have access to that? Okay. All right. I just, I, you know, I just don't, or, or can that be done from home? Can you, can you do that from home? They, I mean, they can be set up that way. Uh-huh. Just curious. And so who, who has access to manage the thermostats right now? I don't have it set up. I can put it on my cell phone, but I don't have it okay. set up, so it's just in the just, building. Okay. Now, the one thermostat's in my office, and the one is in the, that hallway. Mm -hmm. And then, I believe there's this one here, and I don't, the 
Can he have his own? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got all. Okay. All right. Um, so we have an even program, program on or set them on a schedule or? Okay. Well, probably when you get a chance, program them so they won't be heating and air during the during the night so much. When you, when you I have chance. that hallway program. I don't know if I'll come on today or not, but I have Which this one I don't think even comes home. All right. And, and like they're off at night, I'm on Sundays, Saturdays, mm -hmm. Sundays, okay. Um, well, let me ask you a okay. question. The program will go off on the weekends. The building cools down or heats up, whichever way it summer went. To turn them back on, don't they have to work harder to get it back than if it would if you kept it a constant? Because all the furniture, the walls, everything <coughs> stays at a Now the constant. furniture, yeah, you're right. The furniture will get hot. Maybe they could turn them down where they weren't. Instead of cooling at 73 on the weekends or 72, it cooled to 78 or something like that. Right, because we tried it at, at our house, and mm -hmm. it's cheaper to it set them and leave them alone. Let it stay Let it stay mm -hmm. a constant. You know, heat or cool, whichever you're doing. All right. Um, I wanted to ask: Is everyone satisfied with the setup of the the chamber in here? That podium's too high. Too high. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I mean, I'm a short person, but I've even had members of the audience already comment that we're here at our first meeting. Mm -hmm. that they can't see a lot of us up here because that podium is high. <coughs> is this the same height as the other one? Oh, okay. Um, hmm. I can't see anybody in that audience right there because, and you made that comment earlier, that you used to experience that from mm -hmm. the old place about it being in the center. There. When it's in the middle, yeah. you can't, I couldn't see anybody. Right. I, I really... Hold on the side there where the chairs are. Just, and that big old box and have the, the dais. That's, that's what I was surprised that didn't happen. What is that? The dais isn't sitting up. That would be expensive to do that. Yeah, it's elevated. Yeah, it's elevated. Mm -hmm. It's elevated. It's elevated. It's elevated. It's elevated. It's elevated. This was $11,000 like this if we wanted to build it. Then you'd have to have handicap access to counties, yeah. you know, elevate from the front. Right. So, uh, um, yes. Maybe a, I'm sorry. Um, what about the handicap parking for some of us? Uh, we have the handicap parking right No, here. I meant in here. Uh, when Mr. Morgan came in no, here. No, we took the whole front row out for yeah. handicap parking. All oh, that, is that is yeah. just didn't. And the back uh -huh. one right there. And, and we've got one space in the back as well. I had a I had, I had a thought about the, the podium. Uh -huh. yeah, um, I was, I was going to share that. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I had a thought. Um, maybe one that's a little leggy. You know, if you can see through it a little better mm -hmm. than one that's solid. Or either lower that one. Or put it on wheels, and we can push it to the side. Try that. Uh -huh. Bang. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to charge for that, Greg? Yeah. Okay. Bill. He's eyeballing and cutting it off because I've seen Mary. <laughs> <laughs> and now I, I received a complaint that folks sitting on this side couldn't see through the high back chairs. Mm. Um, okay, I can't. <laughs> You don't have Superman. I can move. Uh, uh, and, and then, <laughs> can't even tell if I'm here. <laughs> one one person complained that they didn't like it. He he didn't like it because he couldn't see the attorney's face. But I'm telling you, I really that like it. That's why we have it this way, so that the public won't be seeing his face. Yeah, I I like it. I like to see <laughs> them talking to me. I I like that. Uh, they're, you know, he's here to, to the attorney and, and the engineer. They're here to uh, uh, guide us and consult us, and and um, you know, it's 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 almost like we're at a board table. 
action. And the other people are looking up through there and wonder why that chair there is moving and don't see anybody else. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like we love you. <laughs> okay, so here's something more serious. Um, sound is traveling from one office to the other. I'm sure you've experienced. I know staff has experienced it, and the chief as well. Um, and. Uh, we have, we're thinking about a solution to put some type of insulation, possibly something called rock wool over. We want to start, my suggestion would be to start with the police department first because they, they really need their um, uh, privacy over there in their discussions. And um, it's called rock wool, if you're Googling that. <coughs> it's fire resistant and sound resistant. And to, uh, put it over those offices on the outside wall over there in the police department and the lobby area first and, and try that out and see how it works. Um, and if it works, then I would suggest to get these outside offices of staff and along the wall and, and over here as well um, and see how that works before we try to do the, the uh, hallways and, and this room. That may be enough, but we may have to wait till um, next budget season to do that side of the building. But I think we need to go ahead and, and get a quote for the police department. It needs to be professionally installed and um, put something in there, some type of insulation, soundproof insulation over their offices in the lobby. Well, my thoughts on it. Maybe that's the way to go, but I would first inquire with the, uh, the, the builder and see if that's the way we need to go. I experienced it personally with the construction of forestry's office, uh, and I mentioned it in the process of this office mm -hmm. being built, but it didn't happen, but that's okay. Uh, we took the three administrative people or I did in that office over there and you can almost shoot a pistol off in their offices when the doors closed but they built it that way and uh, they built the three supervisors offices that way privacy needs to be her office needs to be really private uh, police department I agree with Gary's particular mm -hmm. and uh, Hers needs to be that way, Courtney, or the city administrator. But solid corridors and the soundproofing insulation, those <coughs> over there, you can shut the door and you don't hear through. Uh, and I don't know what those are, but what I'd do, I'd suggest that we talk to the builder and get his idea on that. Russell, do you have any input? Yeah, yes, I do. And I briefly mentioned this to the architect. Um, I think if you have a product in mind, maybe um, uh, the uh, appropriate thing to do there is to have the architect review the product and give you an opinion by letter, you know, that that's an appropriate um, application. You know, uh, I, I think fire would be a concern and we certainly want to make sure that they were not violating the building code right. issue. So mm -hmm. to have him weigh in on that, the architect and or the builder. Uh, I, I think I think that would would be important. And the solid corridor. Yes, I, those are hollow corridors, and you can hear anything All right. through them. Mm -hmm. Our offices over there. That was part of the soundproofing. They had to be a solid corridor. Yes, sir. And another thing about those doors, the they don't even fit the door down good. One of our doors in um, Amber's office, when it's closed, you can actually see the light of the window through it, coming in the hallway. Mm -hmm. oh. That's uh, a that's the contractor. Now, should we have um, Sperry come in and look at that? Yes. Okay. All right. We'll get the contractor to, to look at that. That should be under warranty. <coughs> Solid corridors are going to be expensive. Yeah. And we don't need them in every room in our office. There's okay. just a, a few. Mm -hmm. That's really important. Mm -hmm. 
Now that's my opinion. <coughs> we don't need them in every office. Right, in our but break room, we don't need a solid corridor on the back of the break room. Mm -hmm. um, um, now all the, all the walls, even the walls in here, we were told it was soundproof insulation, is what the architect said, it was soundproof insulation, but every wall, every interior wall has insulation on it, in it, on it. Uh, so, but uh, so. But but the ceilings does not. You know. No. Um, so rock wool is something that, that I've looked at, and if maybe if he has a something similar that's fire retardant, or sound retardant, or something that's more soundproof than rock wool, and do does does he think that it would be sufficient just to do the offices? you know, as a cost saver. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I'll be happy to make that inquiry. Okay, and probably then um, we start with uh, three doors for the Chief and Amber and Courtney. And I, then, I yes, recommend one thing who I noticed that I never mentioned to Courtney is the exterior door next to the water department. I mean, coming in for the public. As far as just from a security perspective, that's a hollow corridor too. Mm -hmm. it seems very flimsy. You'd almost want the the entrance come back to the city folks, not from a noise standpoint, but just from a having a real door. Mm -hmm. There might be a good idea. Well, we need to must be I mean, we can get quotes, but it's. I mean, if you. Start but I mean, a solid corridor, I would think. I mean, I'm, I I like those when I. I know. It's a hundred dollars more. Now, is that going to be the, the, the jam and everything, or are you just going to try to replace the slab? Now, the ones on ours over there, again, I'm going back to the ones I did over there for soundproofing. Those are jams and everything. You cannot see through them, under them, or around them. When you close them, they're sealed. If you did the jam, too, you could insulate between the stud and the jam. And the jam. That might help, too, if you were going to do the whole thing. But that, what we're doing now is an after, mm -hmm. yeah, after the fact. Just, just a slab. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Russell, Russell, he knows better than me. I agree, I agree. Yeah. So three three doors is what I heard, Chief Amber and Courtney? Uh-huh, to begin with. Mm -hmm. And the second door in our lobby going in, Maybe that door needs to be a little more secure than Well, we need, yeah, and we do, we need to get a price, though, and really see, you know, what it's going to be. The I police department door. lobby door? <clears throat> I guess, I mean, you can't, yeah. Um, I mean, once we, once we learn, we need to get a price on all of that. <clears throat> and there may, there may be more uh, labor involved in just the slab because you got to chisel out all the hinges and the, you know, mm -hmm. so it might be about the same either way. <laughs> <laughs> so if we're looking at changing Amber's door, then we really, we wouldn't need the contractor to come out and rework it, make it right, the door that's hanging there. True. Is that enough on sound? I, I think it is because I think now. it's going to be expensive. Yeah, yeah. I, so. I mean, just to look and kind of get a price, get a price on rock wool, see, or whatever it is the architect suggests, right. and see what it's going to cost to, to do the police department offices. It's not bad, maybe we'll get Courtney's right away at the same time. Um, Landscaping. Now, Courtney said Miss Barbara's gonna. She's gonna keep up what's right here in the front on 98. And I mean, I'm sure if we decide to put move the other stuff around the building, that she'll. I mean, she already did that over there. She didn't need it. You know? mm -hmm. So uh, Courtney and I talked about some some uh, muley plants were destroyed out here during construction. So you're gonna try to find some from somewhere along the way and maybe the uh, streets and roads guys <coughs> can place those and then Miss Miss Barbara's gonna keep 
this lot weeded? We just pick the trash up and weed it. And okay. And I mean, when it gets needed, it needs cut, she can let me know and I'll have them come and we'll be able to see it now from here. And then uh, we have talked many times, and, and Keisha has talked many times. She wants to bring the plants over, and, and that's fine with me. I think it's a good idea, but we kind of we would need a little design, don't you think? Um, and um, bring those. Uh, Take palms and bring those over here somewhere, even if they go on the side or around in the back, because they don't have as much space. Right? You know, but I think we could take them and, and make something nice over here. Um, would we have to have that professionally done, moved? I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. We know we, we want them to survive if we do do it. And then we have to have a. Um, Monument for Miss Pat Bragdon. We kind of looked at a couple of little monuments, just looking at them online. We need a location for that. Uh, and that's in our contract with her that we have a little, you know, a, some type of a monument um, that denotes her ge her generous donation. Um, and do we have any idea of where we might like to put that on the ground? I just think it should be on the front somewhere. Where I'm from, I don't know. I don't have an idea of somewhere where it's out front. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got either side, so. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, and we've got quite a few items over here. I don't know if they're taking the fire hydrant out yet or not. I can't yeah, it's going so. away. Um, could be on this side mm -hmm. over here. Um, The police department has requested to, do you still want to do your car washing as you kind of, you mentioned to me briefly? We need some, some place to build them to do it back here like we talked about. Okay, he, they want to do their car washing over the inlet box area right back here. And then he, he uh, talked about taking the other side of this, this covered area and um, closing it up all the way and having a little storage area to keep all of their um, car washing utensils in. How does that seem to you all? Will you all roll up your hose and pick your mops up and buckets and everything? No, no, okay. absolutely. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Do we have to? <laughs> If they don't, we'll come by and pick them up and carry them home. <laughs> yeah, so well, that, that's the reason for having this closed in and a place to keep it. Well, so. that's kind of an eyesore anyway. Yeah, close so it in. Make it look better. Well, I think it was, it's, it's much more attractive than what it was. I think Donald's got it closed in there pretty decent. I mean, it, it, it sticks out, but it, it's not as bad as it was. Can they, can they move forward with that, moving their uh, car washing station? Are you just going to put a couple more fence panels? That's game? what we have talked about, just something. I mean, it's like right. riding by on the highway, like you said, I mean, you see that generator yeah, and everything. Open. If it was completely closed in and we kept our buckets and our brushes and, and just stuff there that we washed yeah. cars with. Just as long as they can get to it to service it. Yeah, yeah and that's that, how that's one wall, he could put a piece of pegboard, four by eight pegboard, and put his little hooks and hang some stuff up on there. Is that all right? We're going to move the garbage can back there, too? It stays right there during the week. It just gets pulled out on Mondays. Okay. Mm -hmm. It usually stays right here at this back door. So that she's taking trash out. Now, we need, I believe we need a, a gutter system as well. Uh, we need to start over here because the sidewalks are already getting slippery. Water is dripping off, moisture is dripping off here. And um, I think uh, for our next budget workshop, we should by then have uh, some quotes on a seamless gutter system and, 
and see what that, that will run us do. Have you all noticed the water dripping on this side? And back here too. Mm -hmm. I haven't noticed it back Because it doesn't get as much sun, mm -hmm. so it doesn't really dry. And it's, it's on the front side as well, on this north side. Parking. So, I beg your pardon? You said the front side, uh, the, the north side. The north side. That's the east side. The, I know that, but the north side of the little um, <laughs> portico that's out there. Oh, uh, gotcha. <laughs> where the bicycle is, the north side of that, uh, okay. where the bicycle rack is. And then parking. Staff is doing a great job with parking in the north parking lot. So thank you all very much. You're doing good now. The commission needs to do the same. I think <laughs> the commission uh, overall, it seems like they're parking out there, but we, you know, we want to try to, I would suggest to save this front area for our visitors. Um, on Sonatrol, I'm, you've communicated with them a little bit about the window damage. He says, I don't have a quote, I really don't have anything to tell them. So, I mean, they know the women, windows have been damaged due to the installation. Um, you were here when the guy was out here doing the rest of the install and he looked at it and acknowledged that they, they damaged the windows. But I don't have anything to send them as far as a, a bill or a quote or this is how much it's going to cost because we haven't been able to get the window guys to get anything. Mm -hmm. So, I, mean, we've, I know that we've discussed having Dan send a letter mm -hmm. that says that they're responsible for it, but I don't, I don't have any other information. And, and you tried to get in touch with the people in Mexico, not Ma Mariana? Russell sent an email just oh. a few days ago. Uh -huh. Now, last week, the people that installed the windows and the doors, it's the same company, mm -hmm. they show up here, they say, we're here to look at your door. We, we had a report that something's wrong with your door. Nothing wrong with the door, but something's wrong with the windows. Uh -huh. So they looked at all the windows and said they'd get back with me. So I just haven't had any luck getting anything. Well, I'm concerned about waiting too long that they'll think that, you know, they may they say may say there may be a problem if we wait too long to try to have the windows repaired and have have uh, Sonatrol reimbursed for that. Yeah, I, I think that's a valid concern. I, I, I can't explain why they're not providing the quotes. Mm -hmm. uh, they've asked and asked and called and email and... Could the job be too small? Um, maybe. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the issue is. I can, I, I can understand the folks in uh, in both locations, mm -hmm. being busy replacing windows from as a result of the storm, um, but I think we've been on their list for a while. Uh, it, Tommy's in uh, Panama City, and then Tommy's Auto Glass in Mariana. Those are not related businesses, but th those are the two companies. Uh, do you think we should look for someone else? Or? Definitely. At, at, at this point, for, for sure. I mean, we, we, this needs to be resolved. Would you, right. Russell, my question is, is would you have a glass company replace those or would you replace the panels? I've had a little bit of experience personally with those windows and the, and the gas and the center of them. And you don't have to replace the entire window, you just replace the panel, which I'm sure yeah, you know. that's right. And that's right. And, and that's, that's what, what the quote we, we yeah. asked for. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's what we're, we're talking yeah. about, the bottom panel. Panel, um, correct. And yeah. that's why I thought maybe the job was too small. Well, I know one lady, to follow up on what Russell said, that she has had windows ordered for her house since Michael, right after Michael. They came in... Thursday of last week. Anyway, and, so, and that's so almost four months. You know, and people's behind. But at least we could get something in writing. If that's the case, at least we could get something in writing, uh, committing to get the job done. Right. 
Right. Or, or just the price. Yeah, just the price. Yeah. Or exactly. could, and also, could could Dan or Russell write to Sonatrol and tell them that when these ten windows and, and the windows, the location and the room numbers that they're in, these ten windows were damaged during the security installation, and you are diligently working to get a quote to replace the, the panels, the ten window panels. Uh, to replace those panels and that you will be eventually submitting for reimbursement on that damage so that their sonic mm -hmm. trials pre-warned that they're we're not just silent and then all of a sudden a year later they get a you know a, a request for reimbursement would i just recommend i know i'll send this courtney sent the, letter, the initial that letter let's get the quote and then we can decide whether it's a courtney letter or lawyer letter saying now we've got our quote we're proceeding with the work we expect you to pay for it and and, and on that note we are withholding the on of fraud payment too we did not send that in okay their okay their payment for it's okay maybe they'll call you then <laughs> that's usually the easiest way to get a hold on them yeah <laughs> all right um okay that's all I have. Do you all have anything? <coughs> do you have anything? Yes, sir? I, I do, just, just to just to update you. Uh, we were waiting on the as-built survey, which we, we have requested uh, uh, several occasions. Uh, most recently on February the 12th. Uh, we need a revised pipe video. The pipe video they sent us was not acceptable. Uh, so we, we've made that request, and then um, execution of the five-year guarantee. Uh, and I believe that uh, the city has executed it, and we forward that to the contractor for them to sign. Okay. Um, as of yesterday, we sent it to the contractor. Okay. All right. Uh, Courtney, do you, do you have anything? I don't think we have it. Whatever. Okay. Uh, the, the sheet rock repair. Yeah, there is a crack down the side of oh, that yeah. window, and mm -hmm. um, it is just, just a sheet rock repair. It is sand it down and repaint it. Mm -hmm. But the contractor it. needs to, to do yeah. that right. Yeah, yeah. 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 and they, they've been notified. All right, now when we have a year warranty, when does that start? Uh, when the building is accepted the final payment so it hasn't started yet okay i think uh, would that be when we sign sign with um, centennial bank i think that's going to be the first week of april sometime is that it or uh i, th I think it might it, no i don't think that's okay that's the same all that's right. not the same all right miss keisha do you have anything No, no outstanding items with the building or something that needs to be addressed. Okay. All right then. We'll move forward to item three. And we'll talk about the old building. Uh, discussion of possible action concerning decommission and disposition of the old city hall complex. So this one might be a little more complicated. Now, Courtney just was telling me during the recess that she's had someone talk to her. Uh, about I had a realtor call yesterday, and they, everybody right now is wanting to do affordable housing. So he called and was looking for property that was zoned for multifamily, and we don't have much in the city, we have very little. And that piece just happens to be adjacent to multifamily, so it could be rezoned. So he asked me, well, what are y'all doing with the old city hall building? I said, well, we're going to have a meeting tomorrow and discuss that. And I said, you know, are you interested in buying it? And he said, well, we, we may be. So, you know, we might could sell the building. Um, you'd have to put it out and see what kind of offers you get for it. But it, it is able to be resolved to that multifamily that people are looking for. And I actually, when you when you told me that, it reminded me. I've had a, a real estate agent 
complained to me very recently within the month that we didn't have enough, we had no multifamily. Almost everything that we have is the Sands condos is multifamily. Mm -hmm. There's a piece beside the health department that's multifamily and then the property on the corner across, which would be the coves and the adjacent property coming mm -hmm. back towards the cemetery. That's all the multifamily in the city. Mm -hmm. I wanted we was to go ahead and rezone that and put it out for sale. It's an option. Mm -hmm. So that, that is an option. The, um, I do some work in that area, just from, as an attorney, and the federal housing credit stuff that's going on now, they're giving a preference to areas impacted by the hurricane, Hurricane Michael, and they, they literally put all of them in the top tier to be funded right now. And um, it's, it's yeah, very active right now. The big, big, the big nationwide companies that are looking to build that stuff are chasing those all, all through the McCullough County, all the way through the Bay County right now. So. And I don't know if that's something that you put up for auction to see what you can get, and versus putting a price on it, you're trying to sell it for a certain price. I mean, but that's the problem with a lot of these developers is they can't spot zone, so they can't just pick a piece and say, oh, I'm going to turn this into multifamily. You have to be contiguous to other mm -hmm. zones. Mm -hmm. well, that's a thing. But you read about what's going on, has been going on for, gosh, eight years over in that much cola. So, and that is one of those federal tax credit programs that the big, big companies take advantage of, but they pay millions for property when they do those. They're long term and they're you yeah. know, they're intended to be for firemen and police and teachers and that sort of thing. Of course they're getting hung up over an appalach on it. But that's interesting. And now is there's a window in time here because of the hurricane to that, that our area is more attractive for those projects than it's ever been. And then if you know if we can sell it or get, get rid of the property, then we got to look at how can we secure that property. Mm -hmm. Because right now, people are just going in it. There's no way to secure it. Um, we would have to fix it off or board it up or something. Well, it, it needs to be secured, no matter what we're, we're going to do with it. And that, that's, that's on my list, and I've talked with the chief briefly about it. Uh, he has discussed a and there's plenty of fencing around there that can be picked, uh, you know, moved. Uh, and the inmates could move that fencing. It could needs to be closed around the right. building. Fence it off in the front. <coughs> we talked about the chief described fence it off in the front, out by the sidewalk, you say. Uh, but yeah, at, the, uh, at the drive area, put gate there, of course, that needs to be locked and secured, where if you needed to back up to the building to take anything out or deliver whatever, uh, that can happen. But... Um, and then uh, roll up fences <coughs> shut over by uh, on the on the east side where the nest was, and it's the, there's fencing all around the back of the property. The whole property is fenced in. We just couldn't see it because of uh, the pile of dirt that an employee had back there. But now the pile of dirt is gone, and you can see <laughs> you can see the fencing. So um, the only part is the fencing on the wet or something to secure the building on the west side. Camp Gordon Johnston, the bay, the bay door, uh, one of the doors, the back door on the bay, I went by on the way over here, is standing wide open right now. And the lights are on in the bay building. I, you know, I don't know, I'm not going to go in there by myself to see what's going on. The shed in the back that has, um, I think, Riverfront Festival stuff, that door is hanging wide open. Um, all of that needs to be secured, like, immediately, in, in my opinion. It really does. I mean, we can't we can't have those buildings just sitting open to the public. The lights are on over there. Uh, are they working on the water over there to yes. get the? Is the school board going to buy a tap or how's that working? We were going to give the, there's a tap there that Kent Ford and Johnson bought. They were going we were going to let them use that. Okay. There's a tap in, in the front of the building that's not being used. But how that doesn't go to the to the gym? How's it going to get to the gym? They're going to have to run it. Okay. The school's 
school board, not the city. Right. Okay. Or okay. Because that will run on school board property, under school board property, right? Okay. Well, we're gonna cut the power off that building. Mm -hmm. We were wanting to do it by the end of the month, but we've got to get in there and get everything that we need out of it. Yeah. And so, the camp board the Johnson still has stuff in there, even though they've all been notified that we were turning the power off soon. When we turn it off, it's off. We need to set a date. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You so have, yeah. I, we don't need to be paying light bill. That was the idea of getting over here, building this. It was a light bill. It was outrageous. And the lights are, are on now. We just mm -hmm. paying, paying money. We don't need to be paying. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are on in the building are the emergency lights, most of them, because we went in and shut them all off. Okay, but in the bay, the lights are on. In the I uh, and so we have the school board, Camp Gordon Johnston, the Carabell History Museum. Do y'all still have stuff over there? Yes. Uh huh. And then uh, the dentist. Has he been notified? He's been notified. Everyone. He's, he's got notified. everything out there. Yeah, that he's like he wants. His dental chairs are gone. Uh, mm -hmm. So we just have the school board. They've been notified. Been notified times. Okay. several times. I think Camp Gordon Johnston, I think they have their stuff out of there, but not out of the Bay Bill. Maybe you should ask for a, oh, yes, sir, Mr. Melcher. I think we've got pretty much everything out of the main building. Okay. Uh, whatever's left there is, is just obsolete. Left for the city to clean up. <laughs> well, or the, whoever buys the building. Uh, in the Bay, the, we still have the two vehicles out in there. Uh -huh. And... I think after the parade, I think we have an alternate location for those. Okay. All but, right. But there's some uh, steel cabinets in there, and I, it, it's nothing of value to us. So, okay. I mean, it, and I think that's the same way with the whole building is what's left in there. Is Nobody's taking it. don't want it. So, I mean, I know you have some stuff in there. Yeah, we, they we're actually upstairs. trying to consolidate all the things that belong to the History Museum into 110 where it's on a hallway with lights because most of our stuff is in a hallway that looks like the inside of a goat. It's what they have in there is stuff that goes upstairs and they can't put it back mm -hmm. until they're done remodeling the upstairs. Uh -huh. So it would be, the guy's got 90 days from the date of permitting to finish upstairs, but he said we can move some of it back as soon as he gets through with the duct work in the insulation so that shouldn't be too much longer but you know it would be un air conditioned in a storage room as uh -huh. well so that's why we wanted to move it to 110 so we could at least have a little ambient light but we have several um, display cases that we got from Kent Gordon Johnson and we moved it into 110 with our other things that we had in there. So, I'm trying You're to talk about a room 110. There's a room 110. Oh, 110. Okay. And then we also have the room that has the trophies in it. Mm -hmm. and, Are you um, going to take the trophies? Well, I've been talking to the school board about. There seems to be a desire to acquire a representative number of trophies for um, a display, a combination between the Appalachian trophies and Carabelle trophies. But I explained to them that we already separated them. The only thing in there now are the Carabelle High School trophies and some yearbooks. And so um, if they're going to do, that's actually one of the things that I was wanting to talk to Mr. Milliner about, I, and, and those of you that went to high school there, um, we don't have room to display all of them at the museum, but we were planning on taking a few more uh, for our display, but I, I don't know what a good district, you know, if there's somebody that has a, has a reunion on a periodic basis and would like to have more of them, um, is it coming up? River, Riverfront Festival, there's going to be one coming up, be a prime time. Yes, and that way we could, you know, there would be the, the opportunity to say, yes. 
of what to do with them. And I, um, I just want to be sure that what I think is happening now is people are kind of wandering around in the building picking up stuff kind of at random. Is, are, are those rooms air conditioned? Well, they, uh, they were when the building was in air conditioned, but... <coughs> Therefore, I'm, I'm yeah. asking that because is, is the air conditioning so. running? No. No. Okay. No. Right. Those, <laughs> those, right. those, those, right. those, those right. rooms right. haven't okay. been air conditioned. Well, I just heard that mentioned, and I'm asking the question because I'm about to make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> no, we that's we never thought there'd be air yeah. air conditioning. I didn't know that anything when there was air conditioning except up around the front office. And we we've got we've been working on doing getting rid of the records room stuff, so we've been working on that. Okay, so Miss Tamra, if the um, the if the power is turned off, you all can still get in there in the daytime. And right, that's move exactly the stuff right. Out. Is that correct? That's right, and that okay. that's our plan. Was we anticipated that the power would be turned off at some point. We just want to be sure we have rounded up all the stuff that we claim is we, we moved it in there and we'd like to move it all into one place and we we want to move it back into the museum just yeah ASAP but we we don't want to rent space if we can avoid it to put it in okay all right my we'll watch is full okay I'm ready to make a motion with we'll all the motion I'm, I'm with all considered and discussion we've been having and, and the point you just made that uh, that people can get in there in the daytime and, and get some of those things that are still there that they need to and everyone that everyone that's involved has been notified that we're returning the power off I would make a motion that we go ahead and have the power turned off in the next two weeks second that motion Okay. Well, what the reason why I'm saying within the next two weeks because court, Courtney will have to call or someone's going to call and find out when the earliest they can turn it off. And well, I was, that, that's, and we still need to get in there and get the records out. That okay. are and you need to get your records so it gives you two weeks. And, and is that adequate? Yeah. How much is the road and street part of that? Uh, <laughs> They've got most of what they can take without me having to go over there and sit down and go through every box and tell them they can take it. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Millinder to have the power turned off within two weeks. Yes, and we have a second by Commissioner Mathis. So let's have more discussion. And, and uh, Commissioner Walden says, is that two weeks from today? Yeah, I mean, we got to have a date. So we put the notice out. Is it two weeks from today? I think or two weeks from Friday? I think two weeks from today. I go with two weeks from today. Sounds good. On the 12th. Yes, sir? Now, uh, you have a lot of stuff in there from from the move up, noticing that the, all the nest stuff and all the other, in all those different rooms, uh, have you thought about like something like a public auction or something to get rid of that stuff? Once you turn the power off, it's gonna be kind of hard to go in there and figure out uh, where you're gonna move it to, or what? Or you just plan to just leave it in there and let it go down with the building? I mean, uh, I don't know. I've thought about it because I know that there's stickers all over the building that says we want this uh, from the History Museum and the White House Museum, <clears> and, and, and I know Kent Gordon Johnson. That everybody's got things in there that they would like to have, but the city's gonna get rid of it. So I don't know that we need to put everything, maybe we need to put all the tables and chairs and everything in one area so they can come and see what's, I don't know. Because even that. if you, even There's if you. There's so much in there. It's, there are services, one of the city of Tallahassee uses one uh, called Public, uh, Public Surplus. And I contacted them and I should just get Courtney to contact for it. You sign up and log on there, and you take photos of what you got, and they put it on their site. And I imagine they take a percentage of the cut. And there's another person over in St. Mark's that does the same thing, does online auctions, mm -hmm. and takes a certain cut of the 
of the, and I think his is just ten percent over what the sell price is. So you're not even you get what they sell for. You may not get a lot for it, but then somebody would have to go in there and photograph and and send all the different things in. I don't know who'd have the time to do all that, but there's a lot of stuff in that building. And if you shut the lights off too early, you're gonna have a hard time. In the desk area, just or you go in there with flashlights. Mm -hmm. I mean, full classrooms. Well, and there's a lot of decent, I mean, not that I want it, but there are a lot of decent pieces of furniture and other stuff that are still in the building that are not ours. But Recyclers would take the, the, the computers and the monitors and all that stuff, you know, that kind of stuff. It's a room full of old, you know. old computers. Well, I think I, I'm with you on that. And my motion, I'll go ahead and say this, my motion is based on, on just getting... The, the cost of the power cut off. Mm -hmm. uh, and we the, way, the way we handle things is if, if it belonged to the public, it's called government surplus. And yes, you can have an auction, but let's don't sit here today and say we're going to have an auction and then next month say again we're going to have an auction. Mm -hmm. If we're going to have an auction, have an auction. Mm -hmm. And I'll be willing to withdraw my motion and, and carry this thing a little bit longer until that process is done, if it gets done. And uh, but not ne next month. Say let's let's do it again. I know. It's uh, but anyway, that's all I'm trying to do is get the power cut off where we can save money. That was the goal of getting into this building right here. So whatever needs to be done, let's get it done. And with that in mind, if that's what the group wants to go, I'll withdraw my motion. Well, wait. Let's just talk a little bit more. Okay. Go ahead. And, and I, I'm agreeable with the turning off the power. It needs to be done. Yeah. It. De I mean, it needs to be it can done. Be turned back on. It's no. Yeah. But if, if we want to, uh, I would suggest. To, but I just don't know. I mean, how laborious is it uh, to gather everything up and put it in the auditorium, the cafeteria, the cafetorium? You know, uh, is there room for it? You put it in there and in the chambers. Do we want to have people come and look at it? I think that would be very time consuming. Do we want to put it uh, online, like, or have somebody, the public service auction or whatever you just said, come look at it? So, and, and yes, it, I agree. If we say we're going to do it, then, then we need to do it. And who, who's, who's going to do it? Can Courtney do it? Or do one of us want to help with that? Or um, you know, and, or does it go down with the building? And of course, there's a lot of people that want a lot of things, and we'll be in trouble if we let the stuff go down with the building. So. Now, could you, if does the city own small generators? Do you have any small generators? You could, if you needed to get in the building to do something like that, you could set a generator outside and run a couple of cords in there with some lights, and work it that way too. I mean, if if you did shut the power off on. Just another option. Is it expensive to have the power? But you can't, you can't um, mobilize it and organize it if you don't have power. How long would it take the streets and roads, the inmate crews, to, to do something like that? Can you go over there and shut off all the breakers? And then when you need the power, you shut them back on. That's an idea. Then you just pay the base rate. Then you got a main, just throw the main off. Yeah, I think that's how the main building should be. But those emergency lights are going to stay on. Mm -hmm. Even with the breakers off? Mm -hmm. But they're better. I don't know now that we yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, yes, Mr. Mel. <clears throat> oh, there, being over there, there's a lot of rooms that do not have switches and stuff. And if you go in the main breaker and do the main disconnect, at least you can shut off some of that power that's being used, and then if you say two weeks for your shut off, if somebody needed the power in between there, you could turn it back on. But there's a lot of areas that there is no switches to turn stuff off, and there's a lot of wasted money going down the drain. Maybe throw throw the, all the main switches off, and then have streets and roads go around and pull the batteries out of the out of the uh, let them burn uh, or let them burn out. Yeah, they'll, they'll they'll go out after that using power. Yeah, yeah, they would. And then you could just flip it back on when you needed it, and it, then you're only paying the base rate. Yeah, the batteries would go out if they're not hooked up direct for recharge. Right. And somewhere there's a main that kills everything. Yeah. I mean, it's where the main's coming into the house, into yeah. the building. Yeah. yeah. Is there it's a, got main, to be a main breaker yeah. somewhere? In the back back there, there should be. I thought it was already off. 
Well, he told them that is, is it Is that all. for the bay building as well? It should so have, it have its own. own. So that needs to be done for both buildings. And you had your hand raised, Ms. Tamara. Well, I took it back down because you kind of moved past. I was just going to ask if the Franklin County yard sale Facebook page would be, I don't know who runs that, but that might be somebody that could put stuff. But that, I, I'm not volunteering to do that. I, I think just, we have to auction it though, don't we? We there, can't just sell it outright. Keisha, that's, where I was, that's what I was going to say. And I said this earlier, it's considered government property. And, and we can't just give it away. If, okay. that's, that's what I was going to point at Dan and ask him. I don't think we can just give it away or sell it. We've got to go through a process. Yeah, it. we'll go the same process we did with Hexport. There you go. That's what I thought. That would be more. Well, now we can give it to the nonprofits, couldn't we? We can give it. We can give it away. Yeah. To the nonprofits. Yeah. So. Um, do we want to make sure all the breakers are turned off and maybe have this on a little discussion at our next meeting and, and uh, March the 7th to have, have the report you can report back to us on whether or not our, the breakers are all turned off on, on both buildings and all the lights are off. And then we could address a motion at that point in PP. I'll withdraw my motion that I made about turning the power off within two weeks and we'll address it again and at next week's meeting okay and see maybe Courtney can, and y'all can give us an idea of how long it's going to take us to move some things mm -hmm. get it organized for us I'll see, I'll see you <laughs> oh, God. have you been in there uh, I hey. have I have but I haven't Paid attention to what all you've got to do. It will take a little trip over there. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll be glad to go with you. Uh -huh. I'll go with you. And I yeah. want you all, I, I really, I wish him, yeah. and Mr. Mathis is gone now and he needs to withdraw his second. But yes, I have, I think I've been all over. And it's, I don't know, a lot of it's junk. Uh -huh. But there are, like Tamara said, there's tables and desks. You just throw it all away, you kind of record that you Exactly. Now, Mr. Millender did not say that he wanted to uh, have the electric company turn the power off, so technically his motion is... Well, <laughs> I, it was implied. Okay. You can yeah. just vote. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Mr. Mathis is gone. Okay. Well, we can just vote to oppose. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, is the discussion finished on this one for now? Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, sir. In the meantime, while we're waiting, I think that we need to go in there and get some short pieces of chain and secure the inside of those doors. Mm -hmm. Every one of them doors from the inside. Okay. Put a chain around them, a hasp, or whatever you got to do. You ain't got to necessarily put a lock when you do it from the inside and then come out that front office door. And that'd be the way you go in and out. I'll go over there That's shortly and, and whoever else wants to go over and see if we can start doing some of that, be glad to. Uh -huh. I know Keith will too. I'll make sure that breaks. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, right now we're just still we're going to oppose this motion that you second to. Uh, and you withdrawing your second. I withdraw. Yeah. Okay. Second. Withdraw. All right. So there we go. They've withdrawn. Uh, Commissioner Millinder's withdrawn his motion. Commissioner Commissioner Mathis has just withdrawn his second. All right. So then we're going to work on making sure that the panel the power is cut off at both buildings and secure the doors from the inside, are we going to uh, look into moving some fencing? See if, they can, see if they can move some fencing and get that secured. Well, I, I think we need to look at uh, moving all of the city-owned property that can be sur that has to be surplus, is no longer used to an area like the cafeteria, which it doesn't have to have lights on in it because if you open the doors, you can see in, in there when you're in there in the daytime. Moving it to that location where we get rid I see you smiling. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't no, know. I'm just thinking it's, that yeah. everything in there is owned by the city. Yeah, it's all ours now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've yeah. been often abandoned it to the taxpayers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's been abandoned to the taxpayers. So. Yeah. We've got to do something with it. I know. It's just so overwhelming. Yeah. It is very overwhelming. And the classrooms, the two mobile classrooms, what's happening with that? 
Yeah, those are, yeah, did they abandon it to the city taxpayers? I'll, I'll inquire. Okay. I'll, I'll send one off to the board attorney and find out. I heard a rumor, but you, that's the best thing to do is what you just find out. <laughs> yeah. All right, we, all right, we're directing Mr. Hartman to find out what is going on with those mobile classrooms. I will. Okay. And the school bus. And the school bus. Yeah. Nice that's bus. the bus that Commissioner Mathis said we'd take a road trip in. Yeah. Or you would push it over there. Okay, so talking about pushing it over there, they have cleaned the, their gym out of the bleachers, which was okay, but now most all the bleachers have been pushed over onto city property. Well, let's push them back. Did <laughs> <laughs> you would um, just make a list? Cordy can send me a list of okay. issues and I'll address them. Yes, uh, the board attorney. We, we, got a, we got a bucket load. <laughs> Shove them back. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> so then we're talking about we're going to possibly consider rezoning to multifamily and offer for sale. We can kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, I'm just trying to think of something, you know, where we can really get something confirmed down the road here. Or, you know, y'all be thinking about, do you want to keep the building? Do you want to pay to demo? We got quotes uh, two or three years ago, 200, 250, 250. 250. Uh, can we not just let... I wouldn't rezone it just yet because somebody else might not want multifamily and they're uh, stuck with it. Get rid of it. I, I, that's my... If we sell it for one dollar, fine with me. Well, you know, it's the pleasure of the board. I, I'll do, you know, but I'm, I'm surprised at that because it seems like commissioners don't want to get rid of land, so. Where are we going to get the 200 plus thousand dollars and we keep it? Well, and, and uh, as, as someone has told me that uh, if we save the 200 plus thousand, we could buy a lot of land somewhere else with that 200 if we had it. We don't have the 200. I There's know. a point. I know we don't. And I'll give you my opinion. I've said this already. Uh, I'm my opinion. I'd like to see us take the burden off from us. The mm -hmm. burden is right now is two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars to have it demolished and hauled away. Or to me, that's a quarter of a million dollar burden. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to see us either auction it off to a salvage company. And if it didn't go but for a dollar or five dollars, it saves us two hundred and fifty thousand to uh, have it demolished and hauled off. Or in the case of where it's at right now, if we could make more than a dollar and sell it, it would still take a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar burden off from us. And if we could sell it to a developer for a reasonable price. That's what well, I said. That would be fine with me. Can we Put make a guarantee that they're having you know, it torn down? Uh, and so absolutely. Long? Take a little while to see. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, I, no, I agree with all of that. It's frightening to think that you're going to tear it down. And not only is it the 250000 but it's staff time. It's going to take, it's going to be, you know, time is going to be required to, to manage that and oversee a demolition project and to uh, get uh, bids on demos and so it's not just the actual dollars. You're going to have in-kind services of the well, city administrator, possibly even the attorney. Well, the building is on an upswing. Somebody's going to want right. that piece of land. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a big burden, whether it's financial or whether it's labor. Yes, sir. And mm -hmm. if we can get that burden off from us, that's, that's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And if we make money in the deal of right. getting it all from us, that's a plus. Okay, well, we'll use these talking points and put them to work and see what we can uh, think of and come up and maybe we'll all have some more uh, firm proposals next time or discussion. Well, it may fall in line with what uh, Courtney, our city administrator, was talking about that, that uh, she has had some conversation on already with little custom homes if that materializes. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, a little customs home is a home builder, and you're talking about people that want to uh, build homes 
And that may be multifamily, may be single family or whatever, but it could fall in line with what could. I didn't say it would, right. I said it could fall in line with what they're doing. Have they, have they contacted you about that property? No, they haven't. Yeah. Did you ever get what you needed from them, their social security background? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Is there anything? Okay, so mobile home, oh, school classrooms and school bus and gym bleachers. Okay. I don't have anything else on my list. Y'all didn't bring one. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Walden. Second. Okay, second by Commissioner Bellander. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, then that motion carries.